God is setting us up for a great move of God. We feel it. We are looking for signs. We are looking for the smell, the sight, and the sound of revival. You see, when a woman is expecting, she, she talks about her pregnancy. Sometimes she puts her hand on her tummy. Sometimes she gets excited and she says, I feel that kick, this excitement. You're not excited. I am very in excited, and I know that God is going to do amazing things here in Seatown, Karen. Amen. That was actually confirmed this morning through a prophetic word in the first service of the day, the prayer service of the Sunday morning. Today, we continue our exposition on the theme, Give Me This Mountain, drawn from Joshua, the 14th chapter and verse 12. Last Sunday, we looked at how we can conquer our mountains. In exploring this topic, we observed four things. The first thing we observed is that we must go for our mountain. For you to conquer your mountain, you have to go for it. Secondly, we must face the giants. We have to face the giants. Thirdly, we must seek divine help. In the face of intimidating, insurmountable obstacles, we must not surrender and cave in and hang our gloves. We must seek divine help. But finally, we must persevere. Today, we'll be considering the subject, principles for possessing the mountain. Principles for possessing your mountain or principles for possessing your land. I had prepared earlier to land this plane of ex exposition from the book of Joshua, but last evening I felt, uh-uh, we won't be able to do justice to such a great book without giving ourselves an opportunity to talk about power to conquer and possess your mountain. Power to conquer and possess your mountain. So that is what we will consider next Sunday. Next Sunday is Holy Ghost Sunday. For you see, it's not because of military genius, your maneuvering ability, that you are able to conquer and gain new spiritual heights. It is not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the living God. Next Sunday, I want you to pray all week long. Trust God for the move of God, for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Joshua is about the abundant life that the land of Canaan promised to offer to the children of Israel. And as we have entered into our spiritual inheritance, you know, you can have life and not have it abundantly. Did you know that? Jesus was clear. I have come that they may have life, not just life, survive, barely get along, barely get by, but have it more abundantly. Next Sunday, baptism of the Holy Ghost. You're not excited. Without him, we can achieve very little. We can accomplish nothing. So next Sunday, let's pray all week long, bath this thing into prayer and trust God for his unusual move this coming Sunday. Well, today, as we said, we are considering the subject, principles for possessing your mountain. Now, the book of Joshua is divided into four neat portions. The first portion is chapter 1 to chapter 5. Chapter 1 to 5 talks about entering the land. Entering the land. Chapter 5 to chapter 13 talks about conquering the land. And chapter now, 14 to 22, talks about possessing the land. You enter, you conquer, you possess, and then 23 to 24 is basically farewell from Joshua, the great general, the great man of God that he used to be able to lead his people to the promised land. Today, as we explore principles for possessing your mountain, we shall look at three things. The first one we want to consider is this, that possessing your mountain is by divine allotment divine allocation 
The second principle is this. Possessing your mountain is by divine discontentment. Divine discontentment. And the final principle this afternoon for possessing your mountain is by divine faith. By divine faith. I will explain what I mean by divine faith as we go along.